this week I decided I was going to make a project and I wanted to bring you along for the journey. I don't often share what Corey and I do on our free time when we're not at the cabin and we're not camping. In this instance, I have to choose a piece of wood to work with for the project, and I think that this is a very important part of the process because you have to choose the piece of wood that you're ready to work with right now. Some of these other chunks are a bit intimidating to me, especially the big one to my right that's kind of rocking on the top of the box there. Like, that one's crazy. But I eventually find one that I really want and sometimes you have to really dig it out of the box but it's worth it if you find a chunk that feels right and looks right. I chose this one I don't really know why but I guess I was just happy to have found one that I want to work with so it's time to bring it to the shop and assess what I want to do with it and find a game plan Corey's coming with. He's very helpful in this process of brainstorming. I guess first I have to turn all the lights on. <laughs> Looking at my chunk of wood, I decide where I want to cut off the excess. Sometimes it's just too much to work with when you have a whole chunk like this. I want to use the little knobs that are built into the wood, but we might have to carve those down in order to be able to work with it well um, with what I want to do. So uh, Corey's super helpful. He's really the one who got me into working on these kind of projects. Don't try this at home. <laughs> but he's rounding off the little knobs so that it's something that I can really work with. We also cut off one of the ends of the chunk of wood just to make it more stable. This is the project that we'll be working with. Of course, I put on my safety glasses to practice protect my eyes from the flying chunks of wood shavings that are going to go everywhere. Corey's super helpful of getting the chunk of wood centered on the lathe so it's not so wobbly. I still haven't mastered that skill. It takes time to chip away the bark and to even see really what the wood looks like underneath. Even though I feel like I've been working for a while at chipping the bark away, when I slow down the machine, it's apparent that really I have barely scratched the surface. And I think that that relates to life in general. Sometimes the projects that are the most worth working at, whether it's internally or externally, really takes time to get down to it. And everything takes time. And eventually you'll see some progress. But... Sometimes you need somebody else with more experience like Corey to step in and show some new techniques on how to do things. He gives me some pointers on form and shows me some new perspective on my project. Though I've made things like this before in the past, I am just not an expert and I haven't made nearly as many things as him. Once the bark's gone, I can see that my choice of wood has a lot of cracks and wormholes. It's intimidating because that makes it harder to work with. The tools I'm using are more likely to get caught and snag in those little imperfections, but I'm determined to work with it because I think in the end it'll be kind of cool to have the imperfections and in irregularities of that on my project. So I start forming the outside of it and I decide that I really only want the one half of this project for now, but I think we could save the other half where my hand is for a project in the future. So I make a little line and I ask again for Corey's help in cutting it. It's not that the top half of this project that we're cutting off is useless or that I'll never work with it. I think. It's something that I'm going to set aside and maybe think of inspiration for in the future. I love that dark spot where the little knot or whatever that was is. And I think that that could be kind of cool to work with in the future. So I'm setting it aside to think about. But right now I'm working on this piece of the project. I perfect what I want the outside to look like. And Corey says it kind of looks like a car tire, but... 
I'm okay with that. I like it. The little notch there is on the bottom of my piece just so that the machine can hold on to it and eventually we will cut that off. Now it's time to carve out the inside of my chunk of wood. This part I was super excited for but I ended up getting a bit frustrated. It was hard to carve out. There were hard spots and soft spots and I just kept snagging the inside of my project with this tool and when that happens it causes the bowl to go a little wonky on the machine and you have to reset it and recenter it. It takes extra time. Here you can see a snag and then the bowl kind of goes a little crazy. So I have to turn off the machine and I usually ask Corey for help to get it recentered because he's just got a knack for that and I have a tough time. It's nice to have somebody around who's willing to help. And even though on this project, I really just wanted to do it all on my own and feel like I was accomplished, sometimes it's nice to have people who have more experience and can show you things. And I remember that it's a process I'm still learning and it's kind of cool to have some projects that we've worked on together. Right now we're putting a more round tip on the tool. The sharp tip I was using was really snagging and we were hoping that this would help having a rounded tip um, to not snag quite as much. Corey's showing me again some form and for some reason he just tends to not have the problems I was having. Um, and I appreciate that he helped a lot, especially carving out the inside of the bowl. It's kind of mesmerizing watching and seeing all of the chunks of sawdust and wood piece go flying. Eventually, I get down to the bottom and am satisfied with how things are going. With Corey's help, I'm able to finish out the inside and then take it off of the machine and see that this bowl is lovely. I absolutely love it. Now it's time to finish up my project, and this is something that I can do more on my own. I just need to sand it. You start with the more coarse sandpaper and work progressively through the stack to finer and finer sandpaper until the bowl will eventually look really shiny, like super shiny. I'm always surprised at how nice the wood can look and the fact that wood can look so shiny without some kind of exterior layer or finish on it. It's kind of therapeutic too to stand there and just sand it as it's spinning. You do the outside, you do the edge, and you do the inside of the bowl as well. It takes time, but in the end, like you can see, it's worth it when the bowl shines and is just pretty as heck. Now I want to cut off that little extra piece there that the machine is holding on to because I don't really need the machine anymore. Corey helped me again, and then it was time to put a finish on. I put this spray finish on, but I honestly wish I didn't. I didn't really like how it turned out, so I ended up sanding it off and using a food grade oil instead, mineral oil. I didn't show that part because it didn't happen during this section of time when I was filming. But you can see the cracks there on the bowl, and I wonder what kind of stress caused that. You can see wormholes as well, and it makes me think of how external factors can really dig into us. Maybe I'm reading too much into the bowl and into my project, but it has meaning to me, and I'm happy that I stuck with this piece, even though it was kind of hard to work with and a bit intimidating. There's this little crack here at the top of the bowl edge where at one point, the tool snagged onto the bowl and a chunk of wood went flying and it's imperfect, but that's okay. Looking at other people's projects, these are all Corey's, it makes me feel like I still have a lot of work to do and a lot of things to learn, but I guess that's kind of the point. We don't have to compare ourselves to other people's projects and how nice their edges look. Sometimes other people's projects might even hold a candle, but in the end, I am really happy with how the bowl turned out, and I'm thankful for Corey's help. It's a learning progress, 
and I want to make more things like this. So I guess this is just the beginning. I don't really know what I'm going to use it for yet, but I definitely don't want to part with it. Putting it next to other people's things isn't as important as looking at where we really started and then being confident that your finished project is your own personal masterpiece. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.